All right, guys, we are back with a good one this time. And what are we looking at here? This is a TIG welder. This is the Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200. Just so you know where we're at here. We're on the front left side. So what is this? Well, this, my friends, is the elusive failure of the company to create post flow control this system this this welder comes from the factory pre-built 10 seconds of post flow now that might be good for tungsten if you're using like an eighth inch and it needs that long to keep the tungsten from oxidizing regardless of what you're welding but if you're using in a, a 1 16th or a 3 32nd then it's kind of pointless 10 seconds is about 60 percent of your bottle being wasted and well how much money is that well that's about a 50 dollar bill every time you decide to refill a 120 cubic foot cylinder so after getting on reddit and twitter and some discord channels talking about this kind of stuff they had all mentioned that this is not the welder to buy it works good but it wastes gas terribly so i put a post flow on it this is a solid state relay this is a dulled time delay off timer so when it loses power such as the torch is no longer connected or you have extinguished the arc this stays on for the amount of time set on this little screw so when you set the screw you can go anywhere from one and a half seconds to 30 seconds so everything from thin cold aluminum to hot titanium and bigger tungsten without ruining your post flow now if you need post flow a little bit longer obviously you do what everybody does you go in you're welding 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 you stop wait a second for everything to cool down for a second put the tungsten on the metal just ever so slightly and reinitiate the arc the arc won't initiate because you're making contact with the workpiece but the post flow will reset so that's how you make this happen this works on any welder with a fan and an amp troll doesn't matter the brand it could be esob everlast lincoln miller it does not matter because the units are all the same now there's a little plug right in here on the top board of this particular welder that has a from left to right five wires white white red blue and black the far left white is this red wire right here now the black which is a ground for that harness is this wire right here so the second wire in coming down has 18 volts dc on it now that is the trigger to initiate the arc that has nothing to do with the amps or the potentiometer in the amp troll or the foot pedal that 18 volts goes down goes into the torch when you initiate the arc it connects and it comes back up and that zero goes to 18 volts positive that is that red white red wire right here and this is the ground on that same circuit there are multiple transformers in this machine even though it is a digital machine and igbt or whatever they're using in here mosfet driven this ground and this positive are hooked to the same transformer on that circuit board so this is a complete circuit right here so when you initiate the arc this turns on the relay this relay turns on the timer and the timer has two normally open contacts so you can hook up two different items to this we're only using one because we have one gas solenoid so it connects and this power goes out connects lets power flow through and it goes back to the gas solenoid in which allows for the gas to stay on when this disengages this starts counting down and then disconnects the solenoid in the back so let's take a look at how it's wired all right cool so you found a way to sit there and do post flow but how's it wired in so here's your five pins you get white white red blue that is your amp troll that's your potentiometer so that goes up and down in volts for amp control and then ground these two are circuit positive and negative this is for controlling the current this is for providing 18 volts and this is for sensing 
when the 18 volts arrives to initiate the arc or high frequency start. So we only care when this is initiated. This is on all the time. We hook it up there, gas will never stop flowing. We hook it up over here, it only flows when the torch commands it. So that feeds down here into a solid state relay, powers this on between the positive, intermittent positive, and the all the time ground. Now, what we do is we have to go to the fan in the back. The fan is a power device and the solenoid for your gas is a power device. So we always get it from the same one because that is excess current for the system. So we tap into the fan wires. We don't disconnect the fan. We just strip the insulation back and tap into it and run it forward. We run a positive out, it comes out, goes to the first contact of the relay. And then you will have two wires here. One will feed the timer relay for the contacts and one will go back to the fan power. So fan power comes down here and the same terminal is the contact for the relay. You don't want to use this same terminal to power this relay because then the gas is always on. So we come down here, we get all the way to the relay and we break off two different wires. So one is to feed through and kick the solenoid on inside of the timer relay, which closes the contact, gas starts flowing. But when this circuit is not energized anymore and gas is no longer needed or the arc is extinguished, these will no longer be connected and this will be unpowered. So why would you tap into here with two wires instead of here? Because you want to make sure you constantly have power going to your gas solenoid and this is the only break. If you put this over here and you run two wires off this side back to the power of the timer relay, then as soon as you extinguish the arc, you will have no gas flow immediately after you extinguish because now you shut down the entire circuit. So this will always be energized. However, will not be connected until the timer relay is initiated by the solid state relay. So once power can pass through here, to the already constantly grounded. So this will just jump three or four inches over to the fan ground and be connected, but the power will have a break down here for the timer. And that connects up on that side of the valve for the SOV that controls the gas. So once again, torch actually initiates power. Power comes in, this connects. This allows electricity from here coming down this is on standby, power flows through, comes out, closes the contact for the timer relay. You're welding, welding, welding. You let off, you extinguish the arc, you're holding for post flow. This will de-energize and this will stay there for the amount of time until it kicks off that you have it set for and that will break the connection for the gas solenoid. So there you go, $50 per consumer bottle for a 120 cubic foot bottle. Take a screenshot, this works for all of them. Cause if you notice here, they all got a gas solenoid, they all got a fan, they all got a torch or a foot pedal. This is not brand specific. So if you don't want to spend 4,000 on an Aspect 230, why not have the range that it gives you other than frequency? Hope this helps. It is pretty cheap. I will put down in the description what parts I used and this is exactly how I, I wired it. Thanks for watching.